Hey guys, today I'll be showing you how I transformed this $30 Amazon wig into a pretty decent Rapunzel wig if I do say so myself. So the first thing I did was I repositioned the wig on the wig head and pinned it into place. That way I knew exactly how I wanted to style it. This also sets it up so that the braid will be positioned right and so that the bang part will also be positioned right. First thing we had to do was take apart this braid. It's nice, but it just needs to go. It's not thick enough. The braid also already includes three tiny braids and I like those, so I kept those intact use for later. Next was just brushing out the wig a little bit, getting ready to tangles. It had a lot of back hair, so I had to fix it up a little. So we're going to try to create her Disney bang, which I covered in a previous tutorial. So what I've done is I've taken the top section of the web and I've pinned them away. That way they don't get in the way of me texturing and trying to tease this part of the wig. The way I tease wigs is I heat it up, then I take a fine tooth comb and I brush back and forth on it. We got a little bit of volume, but not enough, so I'll come back to this later in the tutorial. If all the hair is getting in the way, take a clip and just pin back the hair. This will make it much easier to focus on the front of the wig. I have no script for this, I'm just reading off as I watch it. With this wig, there are a bunch of short fibers throughout the wig, so I just cut those off. They're not needed, and they're mostly there just to make the wig seem thicker. Alright, now back to teasing. To help with this, I add a little bit of hairspray, and then I start doing the same combing method, back and forth, back and forth at the roots, and then on the way up. Using this rounder brush, it helps a lot more with teasing. The bristles are much finer, and so that way it gets more of the fibers and can tangle up the wig much faster. Pretty much just keep doing this throughout the entirety of the bang. You want this as big as you can get it. Disney characters are known for their giant bang, so just keep going until it's about as big as you want it. Brush, 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 brush. There we go, we're getting more of the lift that I wanted from before. If you want to see a full tutorial on how I've done this, I did one a couple months back for my aerial wig. So I will link that in the description as well if you need a little extra help with getting the right volume for your wig. Remember guys, heat is your best friend when you're working with wigs. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing to the other side. This doesn't need that much teasing, but I wanted just a tiny bit of lift. That way it's not just flat against the wig when we start to braid this side. So the same method, heat, and then tease. Also, always remember to pin back the top section of the wefts. That'll be the nice side that'll hide all the teased fibers. Now that our bang is properly teased, let's go ahead and pin it out of the way. I needed a little assistance on this part because the wig had kept moving, so I asked Andrew if he could hold the wig while I braided it. The proper braid for Rapunzel is a Dutch braid, but I have dumb hands, so I just did a normal braid. Now that that's done, just pin that out of the way as well. Go ahead and go to the other side now and do the same exact braid on that side. While I'm braiding, I'm also grabbing extra fibers from the side to add onto the braid to make it look a little bit thicker and give the braid more dimension. And right here you see that I grab the entirety of the bang at the end and I braid that into the wig as well. You can do this either at the end or you can do this right now. I ended up not liking how this looked later on so I took it out, but for now this is how it looks. Fun fact, I never used to braid any of my wigs for any commissions. I would always ask Andrew to do it because I just couldn't understand how it worked. But now I can at least do a normal braid for the most part. 
Trying to do that Dutch braid though, I tried for maybe 30 minutes before I just gave up because I, I, I my mind couldn't do it. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry for the inaccuracy. <laughs> Now we're getting to the meat of the wig. In order to make the wig thicker without having to add wefts, I used this polyfill quilt batting for it. Essentially, I just cut out a rectangle and then I rolled it up into a tube and then glued it down into place that way it didn't uncurl. And here we go. Here's one of our tubings. We are going to make three of these. I sectioned off the wig into three different parts that would be each of our braids. And then for each of those sections, I separated them in half. That way we could put our tubing section right in the middle of it. Essentially, we're going to be using the fibers to hide it. It's great to use the quilt batting for this because wig fibers stick to it so well, so you're able to just maneuver the fibers around to hide the inner core of it really, really easily. This is going to take a lot of patience, a lot of fixing up, so take your time with this. You want to make sure that it's evenly overlaid between the fibers on each side. Now just rinse and repeat. Do the same for the middle and do the same for the right side. I am just using hot glue for this. It works wonders for this and you don't need to use anything fancy. I was really surprised with these fibers. They're not the best in the world they're not art of quality but they are pretty nice they're, they're above standard from your regular Amazon wig so I was relatively pleased with this it does tangle sort of easily so don't be too rough with this now what I did was I took the tiny braids that were still there from before and I wrapped them around the wig for the left side of the braid, I coiled it in a right to left method, and then for the other two I did left to right method just to give a little more variety. It'll make it look more visually appealing when it's all together. Now let's just do the same exact thing. All you're doing is so you're taking the small braid and you're just coiling it and wrapping it around. This also helps the fibers stay in place and not shift too much when you're going to braid the entire thing later on. And here's how it looked before I did the giant braid. Now just braid this the same way you've been braiding. Again, take your time with this. You don't want to mess up your fibers with this. The polyfill is going to show no matter what, so you will be adjusting the fibers later on. But keep in mind of trying to keep it just as neat as you can. Though honestly, the polyfill will peek through no matter what. So just go at it as your own pace. Now here I am just going back and I'm adjusting the fibers, moving them around. That way the fibers are showing at the front and you don't see the inner core. Using polyfill for this also helps with the weight of the wig and it makes it less strenuous on your neck. If you were to use nothing but webs, it would be a very, very heavy wig. Now I just take some hairspray just to get rid of these flyaways and pin those into place. Again, I'm using heat from the hairdryer and hairspray to pin down any of the flyaway strands just to make the braid look as neat as possible. Now time for flowers. I just got these from the dollar store you can get them from wherever, but I wanted this to be as cheap as possible. Also make sure you have a decent reference image for this. You don't want to overpower the braid with too many flowers. Putting the flowers on the wig is honestly up to your own creative decision. Pick the colors you want and place them where you want. My main suggestion is try not to have two of the same flowers too close to each other. Give it more of a variety and more of a visually appealing look to it. The great part about this wig is that you can easily fix your mess ups by just putting flowers over where there are any bald spots on the wig. Just put a giant flower there and it covers it right up. Now before you finish adding the flowers, you need to work on the bangs again. This is more just a placement to make sure that you have your braids in the back exactly where you want them because you're going to be putting a flower over all of this. So I just place our right side braid down, hairspray it, and heat it into place. Now we're going to take our big Disney bang and we're going to adjust it just a bit. Now go ahead and pin that one into place as well. My bang deflated a little bit so I had to fix it up just a bit to make it a little bigger. I'm going to keep saying this but heat is your best friend. Hairspray and heat do wonders for a wig. I used hot glue for my flowers, but in a method you can use if you don't want to put glue in your wig like that, you can glue a flower to a bobby pin and just have them all glued to bobby pins. But that was too much work for me, so I just glued them straight to the wig. And now that you have your bangs all fixed up and the braids into place, you can put in the last adjustments of your flowers. Put flowers on the braids on the side of the wig and take your big flower for the centerpiece and place that over where the two braids meet from the front. 
Now time for LEDs. I bought one pack of yellow rice lights and started wrapping them around the wig. I hid the on and off core switch in the bottom of the braid, where there's a wrap at the end. That way, you, if you ever wanted to use it, it's easy access. When you're wrapping it, a lot of it is just trying to hide the LED lights by mixing them in with the fibers. So you want to put them behind the fibers, you want to put them behind the flowers, just anywhere you can hide them. That way it's not blatantly obvious that you have LEDs and it's more of a surprise when you turn them on. Most of this is just me tucking the wires into place, hiding them behind the fibers, basically just tunneling them between braids. It's not that hard and it's mostly up to your interpretation of where you want the lights to show. And here's how it looks glowing with the lights off. And ta-da, Rapunzel is done! I've always wanted to try to make an affordable Rapunzel wig just to see if I could do it, and I think this is about as cheap as I could get it. I hope this helps you out, and I can't wait to see what you guys do. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.